Thank you, Mr. Park, on a comprehensive overview of a very important event to take place in Seoul, Korea this year. But ministers, Excellencies, Madam Commissioner, ladies and gentlemen, it is a true privilege uh, to be your host for the concluding session of this two-day important ASEM Third Transport Ministers Summit. Uh, the program for the concluding session is as follows. Uh, Mr. Odeger, Danielsen, and myself will have the privilege of quickly introducing some of the main outcomes of the two uh, business and institutional panels that we had uh, today, uh, then followed by concluding remarks by Madam Commissioner uh, and Madam uh, Latvian Minister. Then we will have a family photo of all participants uh, out in the, in the hall. And then, of course, you would all be welcome uh, for a final uh, lunch buffet. Uh, today, this morning, we started out with a business forum, as was emphasized by both the Latvian President and also Minister Matis. It was an important component of this important summit that we tried to bring together multiple stakeholders, political, business, institutional, and NGOs. So the first business panel was intended to show also to other stakeholders what are the daily practices and what are the challenges that these operators involved in multimodal Asia uh, Europe chains uh, experience and several important uh, conclusions and some of the challenges. First of all, the lack of common legal framework. We do have common legal frameworks in the Eurasian continent uh, and globally on maritime and air affairs, but not in rail. There are several systems, especially in cargo documentation, uh, that is a, one of the administrative bottlenecks. Then it was emphasized the importance of the imbalance between eastbound and westbound traffic, uh, especially uh, when it comes to China-Europe uh, trade. And alternative solutions uh, were put forward uh, of how to balance this, because of course empty containers, that's a nightmare for uh, any shipper, any logistics company. Important aspect, especially for the rail corridor between China and Europe, uh, is the double gauge break. Uh, that takes place on the Chinese-Kazakh border and then subsequently uh, on the uh, Belarusian and P Polish border. And then again, uh, our panelists provided different alternative solutions to at least uh, reduce by one uh, the necessity uh, of changing or transloading or even changing uh, the wheels. Then an important discrepancy exists uh, between the European or EU railway space and the so-called 50-20 railway space, whereas in Europe the maximum train length is 600 meters, in the 50-20 uh, sphere it is 1,000 meters. So shippers going westbound uh, have to split these trains and come up with uh, alternative consolidation solutions. But then it was em emphasized that hub systems are important, and we had the excellent example of, of one of the world's largest multimodal hubs, uh, the port of Duisburg. Alliances and joint ventures are important, and we also saw many examples of where uh, logistics companies of all different modes of transport join together to create unique continental uh, intermodal solutions. Uh, it was also emphasized that the southern corridor is gaining importance. We have seen uh, investment from Asian companies in the South European logistics infrastructure. We also see the trend that some of European manufacturing is shifting southward. So the original Marco Polo uh, combined uh, sea land route is also alive uh, today, which is important. There's also a great potential uh, for a direct corridor extension to cover the Northern Europe. Currently, Northern Europe Scandinavia and the Nordics are covered via Central Europe, so there obviously is uh, a potential to go direct. And uh, geopolitics is an important aspect. It was emphasized by several uh, speakers and the panelists that, of course, geopolitical situation in certain areas uh, on our continent affects uh, the smoothness uh, and integrity of supply chains. And finally, I think it was a joint uh, a conclusion of everyone who joined this discussion this morning that intermodal rail is a disruptive logistics technology, something that challenges the minds even of the most conservative logistics companies who are used to traditional means of transportation between Europe and Asia. But with this technology gaining speed and gaining uh, experience, uh, I think we will see 
future development way beyond uh, the proportion that, that overland rail multimodal solutions uh, are used today. And now I give word to Mr. Danielson to provide his conclusions on the second panel. Thank you very much. Ministers, Your Excellences, distinguished delegates, I will uh, try to summarize uh, the quite short and compact session that we had on the international organizations. We didn't have uh, much room for discussions and questions and answers, and we couldn't do that when we have a commissioner and some ministers waiting for us. It's, it's uh, about to be polite. <clears throat> but I will give you some, summer, some short points of the summaries of what the discussion was all about and what I was actually saying. Uh, the international organizations, ladies and gentlemen, they play an important role. We all learn that today, uh, especially when it comes to the legal frameworks, uh, putting focus on the uh, uh, common consignment note, merging SIM and SMGS, and the other legal, the legal framework that need to be in place to have these uh, transport systems to work. <clears throat> we also heard a lot of uh, the organizations are involved in developing standards, recommendation, best practices, uh, the challenge might be that we are implementing them and using them. Because what should we do with all these recommendations and guidelines if we are not using them? Uh, customs is an important element of the whole supply chain. Uh, customs is saying that borders divide, customs connect. Uh, it is important to remember because customs is an important player to partner with in all the work we are doing. Uh, we were also touching up on um, the international financial institutions and the clear message from the international financial institutions is actually that uh, for good projects there is always funding available. The question would then be what is a good project and we are sorry for that but we hadn't time to elaborate on that but that could be a topic for another event. Uh, the issue of innovation was also addressed. And innovation, ladies and gentlemen, is something that we definitely need in transport and logistics as well as in other businesses. But uh, there is a long time since the wheel was invented and we'd like to see some new innovative approaches guiding us on helping us to reach our common goals. Uh, <clears throat> when we reached to the end, uh, we had a very interesting uh, presentation from um, the Chinese Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And mine, the key message, we should overcome the challenges and promote cooperation. Isn't that what we all are looking for? And it is that we all are struggling to achieve. Um, and last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, Russia is on board in most of the international organizations dealing with the topics that we have been discussing today. And they are continue to be that, and we are continue to have a dialogue with them and cooperating with them. And they are also an important player when it comes to connecting Europe with Asia. By that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Uh, thank you, Odegaer, for your conclusions. And now it is uh, my honor to give word to Madam Commissioner Violetta Bultz for her final remarks. Hello everyone, and I can see that the meetings were very successful because a lot of people are already out there manifesting our conclusions. So, uh, but allow me now, uh, when I have this opportunity, to really thank the Latvian presidency. I know that they've heard many compliments already, but uh, it was a really uh, good event. Not only because we all came here, but uh, especially about all the efforts that the Latvian group has put in. Great conditions for working and a very smooth flow of all events and uh, that's why we had a very good dialogues. Thank you very much. 
But this ministerial meeting has given also uh, to all of us a real good opportunity to uh, listen to each other, to understand each other's plans, uh, and of course to calibrate our future plans and our future priorities. In infrastructure, that is very important. I also hope that uh, EU commitment to create cross-continental single transport area uh, and was heard, and also that we were able to communicate clearly our core content drivers in transport that we would like to pursue in the future, which are digitalization, decarbonization, and internationalization. But we need to look beyond only national and regional interests, as we've learned here, to achieve really win-win situations that both of my previous speakers have already uh, emphasized. Let us also facilitate a, a closer cooperation among all relevant stakeholders. We met some of them these two days, but there are much, many more out there that we need to bring on board. Politicians, institutional, business, non-governmental, academia, and research institutes. And all together, we can then promote a greater degree of harmonization of strategic planning efforts in the development of trans-Euro-Asian transport corridors. At the same time, I would like to invite us to be sensitive to ensure social, environmental, and economical issues arising from large-scale infrastructure investments that are ahead of us. And all dear ministers, officials, dear colleagues, there are challenges and opportunities uh, that we have been able to identify and the world will face them in the forthcoming decades. Therefore, we need stronger international integration to deal with these increased transport demands while aiming at the redu redu reduction of carbon footprints and prices. We have such an incredible influence on the price of goods and services and of course our commitment to find the best possible solutions, it's always uh, on the table. We also hope, I also hope that we have together recognized the potential of new digital technologies to the benefit of overall efficiency of the transport system and beyond. And I hope we're going to be constantly open to bring on board new technologies like drones and uh, integrate them in our overall global cooperation. Let me also make, uh, welcome the efforts you, we all will make to deploy the trans eurasian transport corridors by sea and land, which constitute the basis for the new multimodal and intermodal transport solutions. The declaration we will adopt today will call for synergies between new projects and existing frameworks. For example, the Trans-European Transport Networks, TNT, extended to the EU neighbors in order to ensure the initiatives are fully compatible, interoperable, and mutually supportive. And establishing multilateral and bilateral dialogue platforms will promote transparency and cooperation and facilitate the development of Euro-Asian multimodal transport connectivity. We should combine our efforts to improve the supply chain and border crossing rules, remove bottlenecks, and of course, remove administrative burdens. This was, as in all this respect, a successful meeting. It was a successful ministerial meeting. But I think even more than this, the real value we created with our direct contacts making new friendships, making new partnerships, and this will stay forever. And I hope that this will also drive our future good cooperation and should then empower all the technical solutions to really serve the humanity. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Madam Commissioner, and personal thanks to you for your personal involvement in making this uh, summit a success. And uh, now I'm privileged to give the final word to Honorable Minister Anris Matis, Chairman of the European Transport Ministers' Council, to conclude the summit. Excellencies, dear ministers, dear Madam Commissioner, ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor to be here at uh, this uh, very important event. As Madam Commissioner just mentioned, I also consider this uh, meeting very successful. But success depends from the participants of the meeting. And first, I would like to thank all the delegations that were present today and yesterday. We had 40 delegations here, with most of them represented and uh, headed uh, by the minister. We had uh, highly valuable industry representatives here at this meeting that uh, br brought us practical ideas and practical uh, uh, options uh, how we can strengthen European Asian transport connections. So the success of the meeting are you, which, uh, which considers this European-Asian uh, connections very important. I can say that uh, by time uh, these uh, issues are getting more and more important because of increasing trade uh, in between Europe and Asia. Transport area could, fa could facilitate this trade and could boost our economies in Europe and Asia. I'm really glad that uh, we understood and we, we consider that there are a lot of things that we can do from the side of government, from the side of uh, industry, from the side of businesses, from the side of academia. We had the ministerial session where we exchanged our views between the delegations on how these uh, uh, co corridors could be developed. And we had the sessions from the industry. We heard today a summary of those, but really those were very interesting. I can say that uh, there is a great potential for land bridge transportation. And it is very good that it complements uh, air transport and it complements uh, maritime transport. I can say that intermodality is a key, creating integrated combined transport solutions. And we talked today and yesterday very much about that. We also say, uh, can say that one of those tasks that are important to, to, to do from the government side of you, from the administration of side of you, we have to look at the simplification of procedures. We have to look at the customs, border crossing, transportation documentation, cutting red tapes in any possibilities where we can have these. Uh, to enable businesses to be faster, to enable businesses to be m more competitive, more cost efficient. The second thing that we can, we can mention is uh, removal of bot bottlenecks. There are a lot of things that we can improve in our infrastructure, in our technologies, in our practices to enable this corridor to work efficiently. Then the third thing I would like to mention is the interoperability and technical harmonization. Today we heard also in the summary that you have to change the wheels. There are different standards in different areas but removing those barriers and having common standards and common pr procedures reduces the costs. And the costs, of course, are paid by the industry. And finally, they are paid by consumers who use the products. So we have to think about that. I can say that, uh, from my, my opinion, we have already we have achieved the goals of our meeting. It has been largest ever attendance to ASEM Transport Minister's meeting, as I mentioned, over 40 delegations. We have very strong ambitions 
put in the Riga declaration of this meeting that will have possibility uh, to be implemented. We see that interest from for hosting the second next meeting in 2017 from two countries, uh, two Asian countries, that means that this format is is very useful and it could bring results. Once again, I would like to thank, especially thank Commissioner Boots for your personal support in organizing this meeting. Can, well, I would like to thank all delegations for active, taking active part in discussions, in drafting of documents, in process of, uh, uh, of, of, of this meeting. I would like to thank the businesses uh, to share your experiences, which are very valuable for us, for the governments. And last but not least, I would like to thank all the technical organizations, organization, my staff and, uh, and staff at the Presidency Secretariat for doing this great job. Thank you very much and see you in next SM Transports Ministers meeting. Thank you, Minister, for your heartfelt uh, conclusions. Everyone is welcome to join us uh, for lunch, but before that, let's gather in the hall uh, for a big family photo. Thank you very much.